Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we're taking this abandoned 79C10 and driving it 300 miles home to Iowa. This thing is powered by a diesel engine which is completely junk, but thankfully we're on a farm full of abandoned cars where we should be able to source a big block from somewhere in the woods, stuff it in, and drive home. Let's see if we can do it. Folks, thanks for joining us today. If you recognize this truck, that's because it was in a recent episode of Junkyard Digs where myself, Bob, and Angus tried to get it running and failed miserably. This has a 350 Oldsmobile diesel, which is shot. The truck, however, seems to be in pretty good shape. Looks solid from the outside, so we decided to purchase it. Trailers are lame, there's only one way to get this sucker home, and that's under its own power. We've got a lot of stuff to do today, so let's jump straight into it, get some air in these tires, drag this thing up to the shop, where we'll be using all the tools and stuff laying around to hopefully rip this motor out and put some big block out in the woods in its place. Let's get to work. Step one, as mentioned, air in the tires. Man, this thing is buried, what are we doing? I have no idea. This thing looks like it's been slowly sliding downhill since the last glacier came through. <laughs> if anyone was curious, like I said, 30 years, there's your proof. Last tagged for 93. I'm going to go with less than 32. <laughs> We're going to be here for an hour. <laughs> 25. No, the valve stem's not letting air through. Oh, Step one, fix the... Oh, yeah, th th so this one's not going to take air. I just broke the valve stem off of my fingers. <laughs> All right, well, maybe we can get three out of four. Three Probably out of four not. ain't bad. That's passing. <laughs> Better than my tough grade. Better. No, it's still not nothing? It. We're putting air in, and it's letting the air out. <laughs> All right, well, Kenny has a skid loader. I suppose we just go straight to that. All right, well, since step one failed, new step one, formerly step two, find an engine. We are in the back corner of the property where there's six cars shoved right here behind me. Two of them, this one and this one, are Delta 88s. And hopefully one of them has a good motor. I think Oldsmobile, the hood latch is inside. It's right. a motor. <laughs> it is. Right here. This is what we want. Oh. That, at least there, says 455. So that's an option. How many miles we got on this sucker? I don't think this was one that he drove talking to Kenny. Uh, 92,000. All right. Option B, another Delta 88. I believe the same vintage. Probably 73s. It popped. There was movement. Yeah, but... Oh. The pliers in there, maybe? Get your it's hand working. in there now. I don't want to... Oh, it's under the bolt oh, up no. front. Ah, can you... <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give her hell, Bob. Um. Yay. Just like that. Uh, this is a, uh oh, <sighs> it's a 350. Well, hang on, it's blue. Maybe it's the wrong air cleaner. Uh, it says 350 here too. Why is it blue? Or did they do them all blue in the later years? If we're doing the work to do all this, we I mean, come on, big block, right? Big block. Although that is the same exact engine block we're taking out, so I, it would absolutely bolt straight in. I think the big block will too. I think they use all the same motor mounts. Go we'll check out option three. All right, option three. I'm starting to think he liked these uh, 72, 73 Oldsmobile Delta 88s. Okay, good, stickers gone. Stickers gone. That's a 455 though, it's big, it's wide. It's a lot larger than that 350. I believe this one he drove most recently because oh. it's got handicap controls. No keys. No keys, damn it. They're probably in the bucket. Hey, you know what? This one's really rusty. How's your siding? Is this side's wrecked and rusty? Uh, mine's full of Bondo, rusty, ugly, green. Mileage? Uh, 10,841 miles. Shit. That's probably gone over at least twice. <laughs> what year is this one? Is there a, anything on the door tag over there? Uh, 71. 71, okay. This is gonna be our spiciest motor. It's also the rustiest car. It's also the easiest one to get to. Let's see, do she spin? animal oh yes it does okay boys i'm feeling this one it's got no plug wires on it nor a dipstick nor that's a good keys. sign but it does spin and it is a big block and it is a 71 on paper our best motor i don't have any paper i don't have any paper either 
The other one's a 73, a little less miles. Has plug wires, so it would be easier to see if it runs, but the car it's in is pretty good, and I don't like cutting up good stuff. This one's junk. In you go, Angus. Is it an electric window? Electric. <laughs> What's this say? Reg Reg Royale. Royale. Oh. <laughs> the bucket of keys. Some are labeled, some are not. Uh, 71 Chev. GM only had so many cuts, right? Why is this so sticky? Old's diesel. Okay, well, this one goes in, it doesn't turn. This one's got a shoe on it. Look at that. This must be for the one with all the pedals. What if what if you worked though? To do? We're gonna be here forever. Nope. <sighs> that one looks good. I feel good about that one. It goes in. Oh my oh, god! That's it. That's the one. <laughs> You're just a wizard. That I was guess amazing. So. It just felt right, you know. Well, it was about darn time. All right, neutral. Straighten your wheel to the right. Oh, good. All right, see you on the other side. A little. There's a little more. Hey, that worked. <laughs> it's doing a Dalton GTO. Oh no. <laughs> There we go. She's out of here. Hang on to her, buddy. Oh, oh man. He's falls to the walls. <laughs> the boat. <laughs> oh, where did that come from? Do you know how many G's you pulled? Wow. <laughs> All right, well, car's here. This one's ready to pull a motor. Let's get it done. With that, it's time to start the narration for this one so we can keep things moving. I would argue this is one of the most ambitious revivals of all time. Absolutely one of my top three. We pull stuff from the woods and get it running all the time, but we've never done an engine swap from one abandoned car to another on a farm that no one lives at with no electricity using only basic hand tools and then prepping a truck that's been sitting for 30 years to drive on a road trip all within a week. We easily had 200 man hours in this and with over 350 clips to go through, let's kick things off by getting the hood out of the way so we can see if this big block runs. All right, plug wires are on, points are clean, fuel system's hooked up. Got a new wire on the positive, everything's chewed through. Let's see if it does anything. Go for it. Ow! That's hot. You okay? <laughs> smells like burnt finger. <laughs> As you can see, we were off to a great start. Somehow, all the wires going to the starter have been ripped in half, making it a nightmare for us to get good continuity with any new wire. The motor did spin a couple times off camera, so eventually we called that good enough. All right, we wanted this motor out by noon. It's already past noon. Let's just pull it. It spins, it'll run. We, we can, can deal with the work. rest. Yeah, we'll deal with the rest later. Get this thing out of there. All right, status update. How's it going, Angus? Good, I got the shift linkage disconnected, speedos disconnected. I'm working on getting the drive shaft bolts loose, and I got a catch pan for when I slide the slip wheel gout of the transmission. So, Sweet. we're getting there. After this, it's trans lines, loosen the cross member up, then that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. Sweet. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I expected that to be way harder than it was. <laughs> All right, if anyone needs a radiator for a 72 
Oldsmobile Delta 88, <laughs> it is in very condition. Very condition? Yes. It's, it's conditioned. It is conditioned. All right, let's test the tensile strength of everything. All right, hang on, hang on. That fuel line has to come off. It's gonna snap the front of the carburetor off. Let it back down. Ah, oh, thank God. I didn't know if we'd have enough leverage to hold that still. Eventually, after fighting the engine hoist being stuck on a plug wire, the crossover pipe being in the way, removing the cross member, and all of us ingesting about eight pounds of sand each, the engine was finally ready to come out. There it is. There's our donor big block for the C10. Step three is done. Or is this step one? I forget. Step one. Step yeah, step one. one. Step one, formerly step three. Now to get on to step one, which is getting the truck in here. So wait, you skip step one. We have to get the car back out of here. Oh. Well, that's Then we of, can move on to step one. I thought it was part of step one. Shit, I don't know. I don't Let's know. just start over step one. When's lunch? <laughs> that's step two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to start working on the C10. Step one, get some tires on it so that we don't have to go through the whole wild Skid loader roller coaster fiasco because we actually like this one. Hopefully, this will move a little easier and be a little nicer on the vehicle. That thing is, that thing is on there. It don't want to. What? <laughs> that bitch ain't coming off until I can hit it from the inside. The front one was a total failure, but we got this one. The other rear tire held air, and we got one on that corner. Up more, Angus. Got it. Oh man, this drum is stuck. All right, tires are on, chain is hooked up. Next step, step one. Step one. See if we can pull it out with another square body. Angus's high school truck out here doing work. Not that I think this is gonna do anything, but we'll put this in neutral basically for morale. Bring her on back. I got a long strap. <laughs> okay, no need to show off. All right, fine. <laughs> Not long enough. Over under on strap through the back window. 50 50. Yeah, something like that. Holy shit. I don't think you'd be able to do it. I will say, step one is going pretty well for once. Oh, that wasn't good. You good? Yeah, the windshield's still in it. What the hell happened? Oh, yeah, the chain up. broke. Oh, that'll do it. What the hell? Whack. That's, what, is the truck okay? Ooh, it, well, it's in the tailgate, but. No, yeah. that dent was already there. This tailgate has never fit right. I don't feel bad about this whatsoever. I have a half gallon of this paint existing. I've right. never seen a chain break in my life. There, especially when you were pulling on it with a strap. Well, look at some okay. of the links on this thing. Okay. Well, you put it that way. <laughs> with that, we decided the ironically safer bet was to call Kenny with the skid loader and have him drag the truck into the shop. This sugar sand stuff sucks. Yeah, it's not fun. So dirty. <laughs> Some of the dirtiest survivals ever. After another grueling battle with the sand, we finally got the truck up front ready to go inside. First, however, we wanted to clean out the bed and see what condition our steel was in. Yeah, look how decomposed this all is. It's even got worms living in it. How did the worms get up in here? Terrarium. Yeah, it's like a truck terrarium. The Chevy terrarium. Truck terrarium. <laughs> That's pretty damn good. Not even that beat up. Yep, that was a gamble. And it turned out good. Can we get rid of this? <laughs> Why'd you take the sticker off? I Just like that. Peeling on its own. Here, I'll put it back. Was it? Once everything was clean, it was time to push the truck into the shed. We wanted it facing outward for the best lighting, and Kenny came up with the ingenious idea of running a chain through a pipe and using that to push it in. I have to admit, I've never done this before, but it worked fantastic. That is, right until the joint in the pipe snapped and Kenny had the best save I've ever seen. I thought for sure we were going to have a smashed grill and a wrinkled hood, but instead, a tiny, tiny scratch. 
on the bumper. Well done, sir. Eventually, we got the truck in position, beat the shit out of the front tire to finally get it off, said hi to Ezra, who'd shown up to help, and took the hood off in preparation for pulling out the diesel. We're getting the sucker up in the air. Ezra and I are going underneath under the exhaust. He's doing port converter bolts. Bob is on cooling system. Angus is on electrical. We're gonna rip this thing apart. Exhaust is off, torque converter bolts are out. Ezra's popping the starter wires off right now. Bob has, oh God. <laughs> Got it. That came off way easier than I thought it would. <laughs> What'd you say about radiator? We got an issue? Uh, just that one. Which one? Uh, the one where it looks like Bob <laughs> got at it. <laughs> oh my God. Well, shit. Wait a minute. No, this has been repaired. No, yeah, we need a radiator. Put a little bit of tobacco in there. She'll see you there. Are you okay down there? Yeah, I talk. So I, I don't know. Sometimes I talk to myself when things get tough. Is that it for up here? Cooling, wiring, all that stuff, yeah. What about this one? Well, what about that one? I don't know. I'm just curious. It's a hose. It'll come off. <laughs> Almost out of light. Let's keep her moving, boys. Well, we clearly made our nighttime cut off. We're on to the last thing, we hope. We missed a power steering line. I'm ready to go. Oh, yes. I think it okay. cracked loose. It's, it's going dying. really well. He's dead. Once he's done with that, we're gonna hook the tensile tester up and pull this sucker out of here. If we can get this out, like I said, that's a good day one. Step one. Step one. <laughs> that's a good, that's step, a good one. step one. Unfortunately, the pump side fitting on the power steering line was spinning and we couldn't get to it at all, so we decided to raise the motor to get a little better access. The diesel, hello, mouse. <laughs> we have a friend? Come here, come here, come on. Ooh, gets it. Okay, come here. <laughs> For me? Don't put him on. <laughs> Don't come leave here. me alone. <laughs> yeah, get the hell out of here. This was the thing back in the day. You pulled these out and you put 455s in. We're just doing the same swap everyone did back then, much later. Yeah, and now we're cool though. All clear? As far as I can tell. All right. Sketchy bastard. You're just kicking it over there like a skateboard. And flip flops. <laughs> As is tradition. All right, there we have it. The 350 is on the ground. There's nothing in the C10. And the 455 is sitting here ready to get prepped and go in tomorrow. That's a good start on step one. Let's call it a day. Can't wait to get started on step one tomorrow. See you guys then. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of the chaotic event that is this video and us swapping the diesel for a big block gasser. Today we're starting off by prepping this engine to go in the truck. We need to change the exhaust manifolds over because they're a little different design on the diesel. Thankfully being an Oldsmobile, the small blocks and big blocks ran the same architecture of head. Even on the diesels, we should be able to take those manifolds off and bolt them right onto the gasser motor. Beyond that, we need to split this from the transmission Get her cleaned up, ready to go in. And then back over here, we also have to take a power steering line off of the diesel motor so that our hydro boost in the truck can work. As far as the transmission in the truck goes, big truck. We're hoping it works. Honestly, we don't even know if this big block's any good. It sounded good like the two times we got it to crank. Supposedly, it ran and drove when it was parked. It spins, it's an Oldsmobile, it'll run. She'll run. It shall run. The last foreseeable obstacle that we ran into yesterday is the radiator, as Angus will now demonstrate. There's a big honking hole in it, right about here, from the fan. You're peeing. Sorry, I was excited. <laughs> Being a diesel radiator, it does have oil coolers on this side where the transmission lines would usually be. And the transmission lines are way over here. I think we just steal the lines from the car cut them, splice them, and use the car radiator, or one of literally the two sitting right there I just noticed. That one's rusty, that one's bad. The fact that they're out, I raises questions. Oh, that's probably really fine. Angus, where do you want to start? Step one? Well, we should start at the step one, and then we'll go to step one. All right, step one. All right, those came off surprisingly well. So yours go, oh, you're done. Really good, really, really good. All finished. We should probably attempt to clean these first. What heads we got on this thing? G. Well, G, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I could probably find some numbers on this and figure out what this thing is, like get our compression. Kevin, that's an engine. Thanks, Angus. Thanks. <laughs> you asked. So something dawned on me right after we got here today. We went searching for exhaust gaskets because we have to swap manifolds to make the old exhaust work. 
and I remembered there's a bunch of gasket kits on this farm and they were over here. Kenny cleaned this out last night. Let's see what we got. It's Oldsmobile V8, 350, 400, 455. That should have the gaskets. What about this one? This is for a 350, 80 to 85 EFI track. Diesel. It's so weird. What that the? Be. Okay, well that one's all over the place. Yeah, we'll, we'll question that one later, and then what do we have here? Uh, same damn thing. Cool, so that one that I threw on the ground on ceremony, so he probably has the parts we need. <laughs> Sweet. Excellent. While Angus cleaned out the engine bay with a brush since we had no electricity, I found our continuity issue, hooked up a battery, and spun the engine to see how it sounded. Yeah, you know what? It'll run. It'll be fine. I deemed the good to go. With that being decided, Ezra and I cleaned up the gasket surfaces and bolted on the new manifolds. After that, Angus separated the transmission and we used an air compressor and generator Kenny Londa's to blow off the top of the motor. All right, gentlemen, we're on to the big one. Step one, putting the 455 Oldsmobile into the 79. We can finally drop this in there and work on step one, seeing if the engine's good. Step one was supposed to come before step one, but step one got in the way of step one because the starter didn't like step one. That's true, that's true. Is step three safety? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that one. I didn't know that one was on the list. As you probably heard me mention before, this was actually a pretty common swap back in the 80s. The early 350 diesels that were in these trucks were terrible. They were not strong enough to handle the diesel compression. They blew head gaskets. They had head issues. They broke cranks. They were not good engines. The guys who owned these trucks got pretty sick of replacing them and eventually would throw in a 350 gasser Oldsmobile or a 455. Before we started this, I did a little googling to see if I would have to get any other OEM parts to make this work, but the one forum post I found said it should bolt right into place. As you can see, this took us a couple tries. We had to move the engine mounts forward one position, take the spacers off the passenger side, and take the passenger side exhaust manifold off for it to fit into place, but they were right it did bolt straight into this truck. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, got it? Yeah. All right, there it is. As you can see, factory motor mounts that we took off the car went right into place. We just had to take those spacers off and move them forward one notch. Being a taller deck height, I could see how a stock exhaust would have issues, but since this was such a long pipe, I was able to flex him into place just fine. I'm assuming the same for this side. Ezra's lining up some bolts on this manifold right now. Where do you need me, sir, up down? Uh, ass end up. I like that. That's great. Well, those guys are working up there on power steering lines and stuff like that that we've taken off. I'm going to start working on these upper bell housing bolts. Get this all bolted together. 455 does, in fact, bolt straight in place of a 350. All right, let's get this sucker hooked up and plumbed up. Once everything was bolted in, we threw a couple temporary wires on to finally fire this and see if we truly had a good engine. Of course, it never really goes that easy, and it took us about 30 minutes to figure out the diesels have an extra relay that needs to be crossed. Ah! Jumper wire on this relay right here. Seems to be the only thing you gotta do to really change the starting system over. There we go. We've got spark. All right, let's put that all back together, move on to the next step, step one, see if this thing runs. We still gotta figure out the rod knock. <laughs> don't even <laughs> say that, Bob. Don't, Bob, don't even Get say that. <laughs> Time. Go ahead. Oh, it's it's just it's just the water pump pulley. Oh, hitting. I did say something it's about the water that. pump pulley hitting the crank pulley. That's what the noise is. <laughs> Upon someone's wise observation, we noticed there's like 5,800 vacuum leaks, so we're plugging those quick, and we have a fuel system hooked up. Let's just commit to this, see if this sucker will sit here and idle. It probably will, it's a quadrajet. It might not run perfect all the time, but they never die. You got any fuel yet? Oh, the accelerator pump works. <laughs> Hit it.
I'm not gonna lie and say it runs great because it doesn't. It stumbles a bunch, but I hear zero internal engine noise and it seems happy. So gentlemen, that's the most progress we've made on step one yet. I say we go get lunch and we can come back and wrap up the first step. Step one, lunch. Oh, that burns my nose a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm leaving. Whoa! Look at, look at, I just get a whip off. It's like I just got, uh... He is gone. <laughs> Zooted out of his mind. <laughs> Holy shit! Tear gas, thank you. Let's go get lunch. After supper, we ended the night with one last test. We filled the trans with fluid and threw it in gear to see if it would spin. Something just exploded. Something oh, the training cooler line yeah. wasn't a training cooler I line. hear fluid. I am covered in transmission fluid right now. The good news is, is our tranny is now flushed. Did the wheel spin at all? Yes, it did. We're gonna call it good. The pump works. <laughs> Angus saw the tire spin. We have a good transmission. Thank God. We can move on to step one. We're running out of light again. These guys are exhausted. I have to give a big, huge thanks to Angus, Ezra, and Bob for helping me on the weekend. I believe Ezra has been dumb enough to volunteer to come help again tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe I'll just work alone though. <laughs> Big thanks to these guys. We might see them pop in through the week depending on how long I'm here. But I think at this point we're going to shut her down and come back in the morning and start on radiator, a little bit of wiring, just a little bit left here in the engine bay, and then get some brakes and tires on this some bitch and get it ready to drive. We'll see you then. God damn, that sun is bright. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day three of the 1979 C10 Revival. Yesterday, as you saw, we got the engine completely installed. Everything's bolted up, ready to go, minus a radiator. This morning, I walked around a little bit looking for a good one of these to no avail. They're all equally as bad. So I came back and looked at this one a little more and noticed something. Yes, yeah, right here. These have all been twisted off, capped off, and soldered so that they are not in play anymore. Meaning that none of these here have fluid, and in theory, this is actually still sealed. With that, I dropped the radiator in, hooked it up, filled it with coolant, and it immediately started pissing on the ground from a new hole. Judging the size of the leak, I had a good bit of while before it ran out of coolant, so I fired the engine up and did a little tuning. That's actually pretty good. This thing really comes to life on the throttle. It's a good motor. <laughs> That's really good. All right, well that is good to see. We got a good running motor. Let's go source a new radiator. You brought a shop back. <laughs> yeah. And a will. <laughs> <laughs> now that she runs, it's time to start dealing with stuff like brakes and interior. And as you can see, I don't even know if we've showed this yet. This thing is bad <laughs> it's bad at the same time it's not that bad like the headliner's still okay it's still in there the seat honestly really good one little mouse hole over there dang it other than that this would be a perfect chevy bench seat the dash not so bad the glove box seen better days the floor we haven't even seen it yet oh, the door cards are all still here little classic chevy big light plasticky up here I'm gonna start popping tires and stuff off to get these ready to go to town and get some new rubber on them. You're going to break out the shop bag. Wow. Sucking up nuts is what I do best. I also am good at vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your parents don't watch this one. It was at this point the real challenge begins. We have a truck that runs, now we just need to make one that drives. Ezra set to work on the interior, sucking up all the nuts and poop he could find, and I went to battle with the rear drums. While the driver's drum essentially fell off in my hand, the passenger was seized solid. I spent a good amount of time attempting to salvage the drum with light taps, getting it to release from the shoes, but ultimately we had to rely on brutal violence and try to break the drum in half. Turns out, not even that did it, and I ended up wrenching the whole thing off and twisting all the hardware to hell. Yay! 
That's a covalent brake system. Yeah. It's covalently bonded. <laughs> While Ezra tackled the front brakes, I went searching through the shop in hopes to find a brush to clean up all the hardware in the rear. There's a tri-power set up on top of a Chevy that is, I think it's still going in this one. I believe Kenny wants to finish this car. A few sets of old headers. A bunch of parts. Lots and lots of stuff, that's for sure. I should probably mention if you guys are watching this or any of the other videos we've done on this farm up here in Minnesota and you saw something like a vehicle per se that you wanted in the background, this right here is a direct line to Kenny. Shoot him an email, uh, preferably with a screenshot of the item circled if you can or a timestamp and he'll get back to you, let you know if it's for sale and if it's still available. I do know the Trans Am snowmobiles and K5 are all spoken for. All right, wire brush, what the hell? Well, we found one of these and one of those, so that'll work very rapidly, but it'll work. Right. Finally found a second pair of safety glasses. Crystal. <laughs> I feel like I need a kitty. <laughs> Well, you look like you're having fun. No. <laughs> no. No. Ezra is working on front brake line, or front brake hoses, which unfortunately, Jesus Lord, I don't even, where is it? There. <laughs> That's the brake hose connection in the frame rail. Meanwhile, I've got everything cleaned up on this side and a new wheel cylinder placed. Boy, did we need this, huh? Oh, yeah. The corn's gonna love it. Boy, I hope Cheryl will roll her windows up, eh? <laughs> you know what I say? A, a slow rain's better than a hard rain, oh, you know? Deep, deep, deep. Let her soak in. Yep. Build a good base. Good yeah. base for the sleds. Oh, don't even get me started on snowmobiles. Oh, don't worry. They won't start either, bud. Gotta go through them carbs. Clean the carbs. Clean the carbs. <laughs> This is the Minnesota goodbye if you're like 70 years old. You just. And on the phone. You're on the phone and you're talking to the guy and you say, Well, I suppose. Okay. Hey. You too. Yep. All right. Hey, you do the same. Hey. Oh, hey. Tell her I says goodbye and hi. All right. Sure. Okay. Well, well hey. Tell. Ho, 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 ho. Yep. God dang it. Talk to you later then. Yep. Sure. Yeah, we'll have to do that then, won't we? Yep. Alrighty. Okay now, yep, you too. Take care now. Yep. Okay. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yep. Bye. And then you can <laughs> hang up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell. Oh, holy hell, man. What the hell was that? Uh, Minnesota goodbye. Yeah, he was hanging up the phone. Oh, that was disgusting. I bet that took you like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> he gets it. Eventually, Bob also showed up after work and set to installing our new radiator from O'Reilly's. It's even this side up. But first, he had a phone call. Well, let's listen to Bob's phone call. All right. Hello? What car? Ezra. Ezra. Is he going to do the five minute hang up? Oh, what are you. Pull what off? He's also. He's not 70 years old. Oh, sure. Maybe the other guy is. Sure. He's stuck on the phone for at least another hour and a half. <laughs> He's probably getting offered like pickled fish right now from last winter. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we gotta get going here, but uh, it's been nice talking to you. Huh? Uh, it was good talking to you. It was good. It was good. For sure. We'll have to do it again, okay? Oh yeah, for sure. Next time you're in the neighborhood, we'll, uh, we'll get together. And... Hey, I I got some leftover venison from last fall. <laughs> did, did you want, um, you know, a couple pounds at least? It's ground up. Oh heck yeah, make some tacos. <laughs> that was my dad. <laughs> With that out of the way, Bob set to install in the radiator. However, there were some problems. Unfortunately, it also came three inches too short, so Bob's got a two by four and a half. We're which... all well versed in that story. Yeah, yeah. We've been here before. <laughs> we need to get more wood. <laughs> so, step one lay your wood across delicately. Delicately. Key... You don't want to slap it down, or else. No, you know, key it word could be there, bad. bud. It is a little tall, is but it? I think it'll well, work. Well, hang on. Oh. Maybe we do one wood and one rubber. Where'd the rubber go? Oh yeah. Cover your wood in the rubber, 
There we go. Slap a rubber. <laughs> slap a rubber on your wood. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Your your wood's a little shallow, Bob. I given her all she's got, Captain. Do you think it'd be enough for a couple of crushed twisted oh, tea cans? Shit, you're right. This would be kind of like a absolutely. A we should have just done that. Finish that. Okay. There you go. So I was thinking wood and then crush that. I like that. Like we can do that it. sideways. No, like upright stomp on it. Oh, I have to drink a lot more beer. All right. Well, I'll get to drinking these. You get your wooden place. For the next 45 minutes, Ezra worked on the front discs, Angus removed the master cylinder, and Bob and I created bushings for the radiator. Bob. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Is that enough? Put the radiator in? Yes. Okay, thanks. That moved a little bit more than I thought it would. <laughs> it's not bad. Ah, it's not my truck. You know what? The transmission cooler lines are gonna hold it in anyways. Down. Done. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, in theory, we should have brakes. I think we're going to call her a night there. We are getting our rear drums turned at O'Reilly's right now. Tomorrow we'll throw those on and get some tires on this, and it's test drive time. We'll see you guys then. Top of the morning to you. That bench is comfy. Why the hell did we stop last night? I think we had brake line problems. Brake hose in the rear. Yeah, the rear uh, was unhappy. The fronts are fantastic. At this point, we replaced the rear brake hose and all the brake lines on the axle. However, after this, we still had no fluid flowing to the rear brakes. Ezra and I probably fought it for two or three hours before finally giving up and moving on to draining the fuel tank. Before we knew it, it was noon and it was time for him to leave to his actual job. Ezra must go off to work. Thank yep. you for your help this weekend, Any sir. Time. I will maybe see you at the end of this. Possibly. Possibly. We're still trying to figure out the destination for this truck. Yeah. It's Minnesota truck, Minnesota motor. Only makes sense to go play in Minnesota. So it's good. Especially the best part. Yeah. Thanks again, sir. Anytime. Drive safe. Later, man. Well, with that, it's finally just me working on the truck for a few hours. I believe Angus and Bob will probably drop by again tonight. Bob lives locally. Angus is only 35 minutes away. Ezra's on second shift, so we won't see him until maybe later in the week, if I'm still here and still alive, that is. Like I'd mentioned, our master cylinder appears to be junk. It's not very common, but it does happen. That rear seal can be bad, maybe a bad reman or casting. I don't know. I'm gonna go get a new one. They got one in stock. I'll bleed that up. Slap it on there and hopefully everything bleeds out just fine. And then I think Angus is going to pick up some tires that I ordered from Tire Rack since the hub is in Minneapolis and I can save 40 bucks by picking them up myself. Beyond that, oil change, coolant, put the fan back in it. We're finally making some progress on this. I think we could have a running truck by tonight. Let's find out. Man, it's been one of our most ambitious revivals to date, but I'll tell you what. I'm really excited to drive this thing. I mean, come on, big block Oldsmobile powered C10. When was the last time you heard of one of those? It's probably been a while since someone has done one. With our new radiator full of coolant, I played with the carburetor some more, chasing down an elusive vacuum leak. I was having one hell of a time getting the truck to idle clean and it wanted to be turned out way too far on the mixture screws. It just so happens that Dalton called me at that time and I was bullshitting with him about it and he said, hey, check the throttle shaft. Remember how I said I can't find the vacuum leak to St. Kinsley Lane? See how it runs a little better? It's the throttle shaft seals. The throttle shaft is all worn out. I mean, 110,000 miles on my carburetor. I think it's pretty much joy. Well, to remedy our gauge issue, I've gone to town and got ourselves a set of mechanicals from O'Reilly's. This will allow us to accurately see our water temps and oil pressure. The one shitty part is that you have to blast a big old hole in your firewall for the uh, water temp sensor, but there's already one in this truck, so kind of a no-brainer there. I don't know what that's from, but it worked perfect for that fitting. After the gauges were installed, I switched out our master cylinder, and then sometime that afternoon when Angus showed up, we set to work on getting the back brakes to work. However, once again, many hours later, the sun set, and the square body still did not have working back brakes. Oh, wow. That's bright. <laughs> I like to say today was a great day with a lot of progress, which it was, but man, I don't feel like I did anything. 
That's the same exact scene I walked into this morning. There was a slight development with the brakes though. We decided to fire the truck and run the hydro boost because I mean, we never bled a hydro boost, but damn, it shouldn't work exactly like the other ones because emergency situation, engine shuts off, you still need to have brakes. So it should just be a through and through rod. Either way, we fired the hydro boost, ran the brakes a few times, and finally the brake light came on showing us that the proportioning valve is stuck to one side. Common problem sometimes. I know you fought that for years in your truck. Literally, I ignored it for seven years. <laughs> just drove with front brakes? I had no idea. It's just like weird how this pedal goes halfway down. But whatever, it stops real good. If Angus can survive seven years, I'm sure this will last 700 miles or whatever this is going to end up being. So we'll deal with that another day. At this point, we're going to pick up tools once again, grab the four white rims, and take them to Bob's house because Bob's dad, Bob, son of Bob, there's a lot of bobs in that family. He has a tire machine and he's gonna help us out mountain balancing. So thanks to them, let's go do that. And we'll see you guys in the morning once again. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the next day. I have no idea what day it is anymore. I barely know where I am. At this point, my body is becoming physically very tired because I've been at this for like five days. Either way, good morning. We finally have tires for the truck. We got these mounted up last night. They're ready to rock and roll. Once again, a big thanks to Bob and Bob for helping us mount and balance these. How low does she sit? That's actually pretty good. I'll take that. Also, damn, it's really starting to look like a truck. I need to wire up a ballast resistor and fix the taillights because they don't do anything, but I think we're ready for our first drive right now. All right, the Bonneville is out of the way. I've got all the tools cleaned off the truck. It's finally time to see if this thing will move for the first time in 30 years under its own power. Kind of a big moment. There it is, folks. We did it. It's taken us five days. Let's see his hand is out of the garage. The carburetor's still a bit unhappy, you know, being all worn out. I feel invested in this truck at this point. Like I've known it for a long, long time, even though I've driven it 80 feet. We're doing it. Once again, the C10 driving past the driveway under its own power. <laughs> Let's see, do we have more than first gear? Second, I think. Working speedometer. Seems like we have gears. We're definitely not in first and we're doing 40, so seems like it shifted so good I couldn't even tell. I really should have cleaned the windshield first. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. All right, let's try the brakes. Oh yeah, they're good. The fronts work. Second, third, <laughs> the transmission works flawlessly. This thing drives good. Like this is awesome. Good job, old girl. Look at that, we just turned 39,700 miles on the test drive. Never thought you'd make it there, did you? Well, guess what? You got a lot of driving left to do. It's a pretty good truck. All right, let's stick this back in the shed. I'm gonna finish stuff like brake lights, ballast resistor, all the little piddly dinky stuff for the rest of the day and then we will hit the road. Awesome. Right, it's been a few minutes, oil change is done, ballast resistor is installed and I even put an air cleaner on. Got her all cleaned up. She says Oldsmobile 455, looking good. Unfortunately, the threads are stripped in the carb so I can't get the stud down far enough. So the threads don't reach. The only answer I can think of, do what everyone did, lid flip and listen to that quadrajet sing. Fixed. 
All right, I believe we're done under the hood. Let's get the brake lights fixed and the windshield clean. All right, gather around kids, class is in session. Let's talk a little bit about grounds and how to identify when you have a bad one. Now, like I said, we have no tail lights or brake lights or anything on the back of this truck besides I think one hazard light worked. I've gone down to the connector with my test light and verified that there is power to the connector, found a good ground on the frame. Everything works exactly like it should. You'll notice I have two lights illuminated, the marker light and the brake light, and they're both very dim. Now with the brake pedal down, only this bulb should be on. It should be very bright and there should be nothing else. The fact that I have two of these on tells me that what we're doing is back feeding through the system. This is missing a ground, so it's feeding through a similar wire somewhere in the harness and feeding back through the power wire of the circuit that's not on because somewhere upstream it sees a switch or something that sees just enough ground to complete this circuit incorrectly. What I've done is cleaned off a spot down on the frame and connected this wire to it just with a vice grip for uh, temporary testing purposes. I'm going to take the other end of it and stick it against our ground here. You should, yes, perfect. You should see a very bright brake light and the marker light turns off. Once again, no ground, good ground, no ground, good ground. Also, you may notice it even switches elements. It's currently the top element. It's now the bottom one, the one it's supposed to be. So the problem here, with that being said, obviously, if for some reason our bed is not ground to our frame, even though it's bolted to it like 12 times, there's still not a good enough connection. So I'm going to run a couple jumpers from the frame to each ground, and we should have working rear lights. All right, let's test it. Running lights, left blinker, right blinker, brake lights, looking good. I think that's pretty much the last thing I have to do, so I guess it's time to take this thing down and give it a bath. Finally. Step one. Alright, here we go. First trip to town. Hopefully the police are busy because driving with an obstructed windshield is both A, very obvious in this scenario, and B, I believe illegal. Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah, temps are looking okay. Looking like we're at 190. Probably got a 195 thermostat, so that's about spot on. There's no fan shroud. The truck was missing its, and I couldn't find one anywhere that fit. So we're just gonna hope for the best. Thankfully, it's uh, nice and cool out, so I don't think we're gonna really have an issue. On to the asphalt for the first time in 30 years. I mean, my God. And for the first time in its life, doing so using gasoline. All right, a few miles to town. Let's make it happen. Yeah, she's getting a little warm already. That's probably fine, right? Speedometer works. That's good. Ride's nice. Tires are balanced, excellent. Bob did a great job. Steering really isn't even that sloppy. Probably needs some shocks, but shit. These things are cruising. There's town, almost there. Oh, a little warmer than I'd love it, but it's not climbing, so I guess that's just that. The other news, the speedometer is way off. <laughs> it's supposed to have 307 rear gears, and I cannot hear the engine at all. Eventually, I made it to the gas station, but unfortunately, the truck had already gone nuclear. Well, that's not what I love to see. Might have to figure out something for a uh, shroud after all, because that's, that's pretty bad. No, stop. Stop heat soaking, you're gonna blow all the lines. To prevent our old radiator hoses from exploding while I filled the truck up with gas, I opened the lever vent some to let some pressure off. off. Once she was full, we headed across the road to the car wash Sorry. to give this sucker a bath. Oh, son of a bitch. Thank God I have a 20, I suppose. This ought to be ridiculous. I think I wear cargo shorts. I'm gonna be here for a while. Moment of truth. See how she cleans up. Not well with this type of walking. Oh, this thing sucks.
This is going to take me a long time and I'm burning quarters right now, so I'm going to put the camera down and get this done. You know what? That ain't half bad. Definitely needs a comment wash or something. Yeah, because like this sucks and it is super oxidized. And... Alright, well let's see if we can make it to O'Reilly's and get the thermostats and shit. To really save some time and spare you guys from the nightmarishly repetitive next 24 hours of my life, we're going to summarize the rest of day 5 and all of day 6. After the car wash, I drove to O'Reilly's and the truck overheated. When I got there, I switched Bob's wood to the bottom of the radiator, hoping to raise it and get an air bubble out, but it made no difference and overheated really bad on the way home. I realized our new O'Reilly's radiator was not only too short, but it was also a 2 core when all the big block Chevys came with a 4 core, so it was less than half of what we needed. With this in mind, I started searching for radiators and found nothing on the farm, however, thankfully someone 20 minutes away on Marketplace had exactly what we needed. I went and picked it up, and at the end of day 5, Bob and I dropped it in, thinking this would solve all of our problems. Now I haven't mentioned it yet, but our end destination for this video has changed at this point. I've been working on this truck for so long that it's now Thursday, and on on Friday, Ezra and his family are going up to their cabin north of Bemidji and they've invited me to come along and go three-wheeling. The thing is, I know how I ride three-wheelers and I don't want to break any of theirs, so I had to find my own. It just so happens that Bob had one of my favorite models sitting in a shed and it hasn't ran for a long time. So come Thursday morning, I hopped in the C10 and did a test drive across town to pick it up. By the way, if you guys want to see the video of the three-wheeler, make sure you subscribe. It will be a separate video on the channel where we fix it and go riding in the woods in northern Minnesota. Probably one of the most cinematic things I've ever filmed. Either way, as we're heading across town, everything seems good until we hit some traffic and the truck gets really hot. At this point, I'm running out of ideas and cannot figure out why this thing is so warm. With the three-wheeler loaded, I limp it back to the farm to take one last stab at fixing the cooling system. Suspecting we were running lean, I swapped the Quadrajet for one that I brought along and then went to change the thermostat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have found our problem. That is not supposed to look like that. And there's no water getting past that thing. I've never seen this before. Yep, that'll do it. Holy shit. In hindsight, looking at the symptoms, this totally makes sense, but I didn't even know this was an option. As soon as you started the engine, you would have coolant flow through the radiator before it came up to temperature, which was weird. But at no point would you have a lot of coolant flow, which was weird. This seemed like missing thermostat combined with bad water pump, and bad water pump usually doesn't happen on these. The seals go bad, but they don't stop flowing. Now a thermostat sees partially open makes total sense. Either way, our cooling system was finally healthy enough to go down the road, and with the new carburetor on, this thing was running better than ever. <laughs> So much better than that old one. Finally, Thursday afternoon. I've been here for six full days and she's ready to go. Well, folks, there you have it. After six long, hard, sweaty, grueling, dirty days, the C10 is finally ready to set off into the sunset on the first part of our voyage further into Minnesota. First place we're going is 30 minutes south to Angus's so I can do laundry and help him with a couple projects, drop off some tools he has, and then tomorrow morning up to Ezra's to drive all the way to his cabin way up north in Minnesota. Let's kick the tires, turn the keys, and hit the road. Oh, don't start. Oh no, it's back. <laughs> all right, let's get the hell out of here. Also, let's see how that new carburetor does. I have a feeling it's gonna run a lot better. Holy shit. Yeah. That is like 35% more power. <laughs> There's actually some bottom end torque finally. The primaries on the other one must have been junk. I'd say we finally got ourselves a happy truck. About damn time. I'm excited to get to Angus's and put his timey light on this thing. It's, it's back down to 180, but it's like, I have to be into the heavy part of the pedal to do 65. That shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that at all. I didn't even notice we've done our first 50 miles. Hell yeah. Here we are, traveling off away from the sunset once again. 10 minutes to Angus's place. Things are looking good. I have a sneaking suspicion the secondaries are stuck. All right, we've burned a quarter tank of gas. We're at 190 degrees. 
We've done 73 miles and we have arrived at Angus's place. All right, let's get the tools out, figure out what the hell is wrong with this thing. See why the secondaries are stuck and see if it has any timing. I suspect no. What'd you find, Angus? So Kevin told me the secondaries weren't opening. We played with it a little bit. It's like they did once. If they did once and it's been doing something weird since. So we noticed this pin wasn't moving. The secondary blades weren't even opening. And just looking at it right now, we see it's caught by this little bar. Look at a wide open throttle. Why is it working now? <laughs> Either way, it was stuck and now it's not stuck. So fast go, we do. Get some zip ties. The first time I hit the gas, I was like, all right, this is better than the whole rest of the time. I'm like, man, I've driven two barrels like this. This is awful. We also have a timing light hooked up. So let's spend a few minutes tuning this thing, see if we can actually get to make more than what seems to be 100 horsepower. <laughs> well, we found all the horsepower. Yeah, we're currently with the vacuum advance hooked up at six degrees of initial timing. You hold that. I'll unplug this. Still at six. Okay, so the vacuum advance doesn't work. Good. That'd be why I have to stand on it so hard on the highway, I suppose. It relies on purely mechanical advance. Yeah. Not quite where all our horsepower is, though. Six degrees initial could be a lot better, too. Yeah. Let's crank it up. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Dude. Owie, my head. And you open the secondaries. Okay, that is four times the power we had before. Holy shit, that was, that was finally good. Finally, after all this freaking work, it's running co- the, the gauges are gone. <laughs> the big block finally makes some power. Oh, that was just so much work for like two barrel small block Chevy performance this whole time. Did it get squeak on leaving a light or a stop sign? Good question. We've got a three wheeler in the back and an extra no, body. And all the tools and everything. So goodbye everything. Nope. Absolutely not. Much weight. But it did actually open the four barrels from the stop. Did you hear them? I did. They went, whoa. <laughs> About damn time. All right, I'm calling this sucker done. Mechanically, we finally have a truck that's ready to go. We'll see you guys in the morning. Angus, let's go get a beer. A much deserved beer. Like right now. Ow. Everybody hear that big bang? That was my skull hitting the door frame. <laughs> Never ends with this thing. Good morning, folks. This morning we're outside the hotel working on the brakes on the truck. Because last night when I got back, I walked around the truck. And from four foot away, I could feel how hot the whole room was. Because for some reason, this back brake is dragging. Now, unfortunately, the star wheel is completely at the minimum clearance already. So I'm having this shop behind me who was generous enough to loan me a floor jack go grind off the stub end with a uh, bench grinder so you can get a little more wiggle room back there and get these to spin a little better free up some extra horsepower once that's done we'll hit the road to ezra's place check this out though this drone got so warm it turned purple <laughs> it's beautiful really but god damn all right get that cleared up back together and hit the road and away we go this is it the actual trip we're actually going further into Minnesota. I got a 40 minute drive from the hotel to Ezra's place and then a four and a half hour drive to the cabin. Let's make it happen. Oh God, which way do I go? Left, okay. Onward, into the old, on the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Going wheeling way up north there with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Oh, you betcha. I feel like I should be listening to the Ubers right now there, bud. This is a 30 point buck. Or maybe I should be singing out for a rip. I'm from the great white north, eh? Like up above the states, the great land maps that the rest of the world hates. Yeah, we're like above that. Looking north, I guess. Big pinch of trees. Everybody's bored to death. Hey, I'll tell you what, this truck's got a thing with gauges. It likes to just make the needles fly all over. That one's doing that. That one just flies to E. The bolts are high again, even though I switched that around. That one we've had plenty of conversation about. Well, pressure's good though. What the hell is that? Potatoes or something? I got potatoes. Oh shit, we're here. We've made it. You ready for adventure? Yeah. It's hot, stinky, sweaty adventure. Wow, I can smell you from here. And it's brought to you by Chevrolet. <laughs> Let's do it. We're all loaded up. Ready to head north? 
Let's go ripping. How many miles we got? I think it's 180 from here. That ain't bad. Are you ready, sir? I reckon. Mm. What does that light know? What does yeah. that light know? <laughs> no. Oh, it's back. We got two three-wheelers, a little more trans fluid in the trans, some air in the tires. Check the oil, it was all good. Anything else we did? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think we're running out of shit to do. Oh, we still have wipers, and it looks like it's gonna rain. Yeah. Oh yeah. The says 139, 830, but at highway speeds, it also says 150 mile an hour, so I don't know if that works. <laughs> the truck says don't start, but I say let's get this done. And look at this, we're doing it. We took this truck, abandoned in the woods for 30 years, pulled an engine out of a different car, shoved it into it with hand tools over the weekend in a shed with no electricity on an abandoned farm. And now we are ripping this some bitch across the top half of Minnesota with three wheelers. <laughs> what a freaking story. This is awesome. Get out there, folks. Fix some shit and drive some shit. Go have fun. Dude, can you imagine if we get pulled over? <laughs> you know how fast you're going? Oh, I got a rough idea. <laughs> Let me do some math quick. Yeah, it averaged out to about 71. <laughs> well, we've been passed by our first cop. He didn't seem to mind. Cabs are good till 92, so. <laughs> a little ways into the drive, we ran into some rain, so we stopped at the nearest O'Reilly's to get some new wipers. After that, things were looking good, so we put the hammer down and made some time. Well, according to the speedometer, we've almost uh, 100 miles, but I don't think that's quite right. Yeah, I don't think, like an hour. <laughs> I don't think we're quite halfway, but it's a beautiful two lane up here, though. Lots of trees, lots of color. The old square body is just eating it up, just loving every minute of it. Got the lights on to try to keep the voltage down. And the only thing I'm worried about is burning the points out or boiling the battery off. So I don't know. I'm sure the regulator's unhappy. Either way, we're just gonna keep cruising, just loving life. Good stuff. The scenery. Beautiful. What better thing to see it in, too? Yeah. All right, time to stop for gas. Oh, another square. Oh, dude, check it out. A little bump side out here doing work. Getting more and more shaky when we're sitting there. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about that. Oh, now, Morty, I filled it with gas. <laughs> oh, yeah, you gotta wait for the don't start light to go off. Got on my glow plug cycle. Yep. <laughs> Give him some competition. Yeah. We got an extra cube on you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> One hour left to the cabin. Ezra's gonna finish it out. We wanted to drive the old square body a little bit. I mean, well. and you turn the wrench it on him in three days. Yeah, it's a little reward. His amps and pressure's looking good. Don't start, lights still on. Hour north, almost there. Oh, dude. Pretty sure that's a dead mouse in the van. The dash, like back in here, is still really bad. And under the dash is where all this is coming from. It's pretty rough. Push hard. There it is. Wow, you'd have to wear a neck brace if you drove this thing every day. There we go, there's 60. Good running truck, though. She's, she's been doing us really good. I'm, I'm drives really nice. Bro, no, this thing like yeah, like let go and just perfect, man. It's smooth as it gets. There's no play either. I couldn't believe that. Uh, I'm telling you, it is only forty thousand. It didn't go over. <laughs> I think that pedal disagrees. <laughs> We're getting way up north, bud. Hey, hey, hey. Whereabouts? <laughs> There's an old square. A lot of them up here, eh? That's, that's all we run. You know, you know you're getting north when it's all squares. Just like the old edge of the old maple leaf, nice and square. Yeah. Oh, da, da, da. <laughs> Today on things we're not using in the video. <laughs> all of that. As we headed further north, the colors got better and better. Eventually we reached Bemidji where we stopped for lunch. Mmm, Burger King. Mm. Very nice. And then went to Walmart to get some pants that didn't fit off the clearance rack. What are we, 20 minutes in the cabin or so? Yeah, 20, oh, 30. Beer stop first. Yep. Beer stop. B double E double R U N. My dad, John Barron's, taught me that. <laughs> Ezra's starting to really, really, really like this yeah, thing. Yeah, she's a good girl. Hour two or 24. With that, we filled the cooler, headed out of town, and got off the highway. Off the beaten path. Yep. Onto the gravel. Put her in four wheel. 
<laughs> About less than a mile to go. Will we make it? I don't know. We gotta. I don't know, man. We're, we're looking at 180 degrees. I know it can do about double that. <laughs> Imagine how many times that motor's gotten hot while it was still in that car. It's probably why it was parked. This engine has maybe seen 260 for years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. We've made it to the cabin. Yeah, she didn't even skip a beat. Good job. <laughs> Dude, this thing blends in perfectly with the trees and the northern scenery. Hauls three-wheelers like it's no one's business. This truly is the Minnesotan embodiment of a truck. The Chevy C1 Oil. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it took the entire episode, but we finally came up with a name for the truck. With that being said, this thing is such a badass truck, it deserves to be on a t-shirt, and you guys deserve to have one for yourselves. For the next 30 days, and only the next 30 days, we will be doing a pre-order sale on the C1 Oil. So once again, head over to junkyarddigs.com, get yourself the C1 Oil shirt, and check out some of the other merch theory, bud. All right, let's get back to her. If you ignore the fact that I'm holding a camera, you got the hair and everything. It is 1985 right now. You just bought your, your first brand new big red. Okay, maybe it's 1987. <laughs> <laughs> that one's seen two rough years. No. We got our 79C10. This is the most picturesque, perfect scene we've experienced since riding vintage snowmobiles out in the woods. Pretty much. This is badass. With that, we unloaded the three-wheelers and played all weekend. Again, if you want to see all that, check out the three-wheeler video, which will be coming out right here next week on Junkyard Digs. For the most part, the C10 sat, although Ezra's younger brother Evan did drive us to town once on a beer run. Yeah, taking the old C10 to town. Ezra's got to manually run the wipers. Come on, there baby. You go. <laughs> All right, turn them off. <laughs> As he flicks them back and forth, they make another half inch each time. Uh, down wipe, please, Ezra. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna die. Get it? Go. Okay, crackers over here, buddy. Come on. It's food. It's food. Get it. Get it. Okay, it's over here now. Come on, this way. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. Boy, here, yep. <laughs> over this way. Buddy. You fat ass over here. Food. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Over here now. Good God. Oh, Buds, we made her. We found the liqueur. The liqueur store there, Buds. Eh? Oh. <laughs> Left turn. Hang on. Cores. Yeah, that's cores. You got any of them there? Cores? Front row. <laughs> two, two of the beers bud <laughs> two days countless miles many beers and a whole bunch of fun later we loaded them back into the truck for our trip south <sighs> yeah it stinks in here now <laughs> i don't think it was this bad on the way up i so, think the the maybe the rain the or being sealed up all something the... died all right no choke no accelerator bump really Classic Chevy things. <laughs> Mm, yes, that pedal pump and ASMR. You must have been a drummer in a in a past life. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Bumper if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh, there it went. Oh, hang in there. Oh, <laughs> what was that noise? I think it's it's better this way because then you build oil pressure yeah. prior to engine running. It's like it's like forcing you to warm it up. Yeah, like a diesel. Oh. <laughs> Full circle. This is actually how this truck's been in its entire life, regardless of what engine it had. <laughs> Goodbye, cabin. Goodbye, beautiful trees. Goodbye, northern Minnesota. Oh, dude. The steering wheel, like, re-moisturized over the weekend. It's so gross. <laughs> <laughs>
I can't believe there's not strings like melted cheese. All right, three and a half hours south. Let's get it. Current mileage, 140,040. Sure, that'll say like 150,000 by the time we get there. She'll, yeah, it'll roll over again. It'll be in the twos. <laughs> Despite running into a little rain, we had a perfect drive home. The truck ran flawless and gave us no issues whatsoever. Man, what a good truck. I like it. It's just it's such a good driver. I mean, it, it needs an alternator. It needs a carburetor. It needs a distributor. It needs clean really bad. It still stinks. It needs door seals. It needs a windshield. But as far as the mechanical side goes, like the, check, the body, the chassis, Fantastic. Oh, add rear brakes and shocks to that list. Yeah, yeah. We've estimated we've done about 150 miles from the last time we filled up at this exact pump till right now, which, give it the 14.3 gallons, about 10 and a half miles per gallon, give or take. So, hauling all this stuff, windy days both times. 10 out of a big block, that's perfect. Yeah, big block truck with an old carburetor we know nothing about. Not and no vacuum advance. Yeah, not no vacuum advance. I'll take 10 and a half. That's pretty damn good. All right, back on the road. Man, I tell you, I'm really glad we put that ballast resistor in. We would have been running on like 16 and a half volts through the points right now. We would have welded those a long time ago. I can, I can feel the ballast resistor right now. <laughs> it's probably red <laughs> hot. It's the only reason they're alive, because they're still seeing uh, math. They're still seeing like 14. Oh boy. Look, Ezra, you're at work. Oh no, don't tell him I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Couple miles left to his place. Doing good. Temps, pressagers, temp, temps, pressagers. Well, temperatures and pressages looking good. <laughs> I'm very tired. Let's go. Oh. Holy shit, look at that. It's the van, but in spearmint flavor. <laughs> well, here we are. Didn't skip a beat. Did not skip a beat. Sir. Thank you for your help this week. Thank you for the invite up to the cabin. Heck yeah, glad that worked out. We'll see you around on the road again one last time. With that folks, it is just me for the last time. We got about specifically 28 miles left to go back to the farm, at which point I'll get in my other truck, go get a U-Haul trailer and haul this sucker home. It's not the way I want to do it. It's actually going to be terrible trying to tow this, but it's four hours away and it's going to save me like two days to just do it all at once. With that, I put the pedal down and enjoyed the last 30 minutes of driving the C10 in Minnesota. Well, folks, here it is once again, the farm. Good job, you old turd. Good job. Well, I hopped on Google Maps, looked at my history, and we've done 442 miles in the last couple days. This currently says 140,265. I don't remember what it was at, but I don't think the speedometer adds up to 442. Which being that this is Oldsmobile powered is honestly a pretty ironic number. With that, we're going to wrap things up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode a lot. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of our other content and check out our merch at junkyarddigs.com. A huge, huge thank you to all of those involved that helped make this happen. Kenny for letting us use his property, Angus, Bob, and Ezra for all the help they gave me this week, and anyone else who helped us get it done. At this point, I'm going to put this on a U-Haul, go home, take a shower, and get some much-needed sleep. We'll see you guys right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Stay greasy out there. Peace. Well, there she is, my 79 Camaro, all loaded up, ready to go. You know, one thing I think I forgot to mention throughout the entire video, that truck never did have a title. <laughs> Four and a half hours south.